What's up? What up? H hello? Oh, sorry, I thought you were starting with a bit of music. I can do that, if you want me to. Okay, no. He wants well, to start with some music. To, it would have been weird if we just opened it with the music. That's what I thought. So, I've written it. Because then people will be like, did I click on the right podcast? <laughs> this is Wait, real you, weird. You have a keyboard or something. I have, this is my kid's Casio keyboard, the SA46, a classic. It's a short, Very it's cool. a short right. piano. This is, I thought it was like little um, glockenspiel. No. Little, little bricks. That's just yeah. option number six on the tones. There's a hundred tones on this bad boy. You can fit so many tones in this bad boy. Anyway, so this is uh, the the uh, the mailbag jingle, which I'm open to suggestions. And if someone could take this raw version and turn it to something good, maybe we'll do something with it. This is this is how it goes. The mailbag, the mailbag, the mailbag here once again. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Yes, very that's good. A, that's perfect. I love the here once oh. again. That's oh, really it's good. So good. That's brightened my day like immensely. It's it was a very very happy jingle. It I, was. I'm, that's what I thought. I, I love doing the mailbag episode. Man, People it's so like hopeful. Them. It's very hopeful. The reality <laughs> is a much more grim. Let me see if I can find a good. Uh, the mailbag. <laughs> That's the reality. Oh, I, I use the organ to to play my kids down for dinner. Um, really? Yeah. What? So it used to just be the whistle, which I've spoken about before, where I've trained my children over their combined ages. You know, they've got a twelve year old and a nearly fifteen year old, and when it's dinner time, I go like this up the stairs. Which is the okay. captain aboard sort of whistle that they use in the navy. And a friend of mine's dad used to do that whenever he came home, and we'd all know. We'd all so go, oh, hi, like that, you know. So <laughs> um, so I whistle that, and they come charging downstairs in the middle of conversations, regardless of what they're doing, they drop what they're doing. Like, it's a pure Pavlovian response. And exactly. When they come yeah. downstairs, their mouths are watering because they are expecting food. So if I use it, for instance, if I can't get their attention and I whistle, they're like, what, 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 how dare you use the whistle? Like, they're like offended. <laughs> um, so in order to lighten it, because sometimes it feels a little formal, I've tried salutes. They're very bad at saluting. Sometimes they forget, but I'll salute. I'll wait till they finished. I'll drop my salute. Like really make it a, a, a thing to program their, program their brains to eat dinner. So now I also play a jaunty tune as they're coming down the stairs, which amuses them. So there we What's go. What's the jaunty tune? Is it I just bang day? away at the keyboard and see what comes up. Last night, whilst fumbling with the keyboard at the bottom of the stairs, I stumbled upon the magic that is the Triforce mailbag jingle, which uh, oh. now we'll have to use. Wow. It, it automatically fit. It felt like it had been there the whole time. <laughs> That's one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and and I'm 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 so ready for people's um, messages today. Oh God. hell yeah! All right, so <laughs> oh. we had okay, a, gasping, an email. We had an email. I'm from... actually slightly breathless after laughing at that. Okay, stupid well, let's jingle. compose yourself. <laughs> Uh, so I had an uh. email from a guy uh, called uh, Jacob who works, uh, he, he does escape rooms, okay? Right, right. So uh, I'll drop two stories for now. Let me know if you ever want more or have any questions. So let's, well, Jacob, let's, let's... Hang on, now, now, do you mean he does them as a hobby or he runs he them runs, as a job? He runs, runs. Right, right, right. So right, right, surprise right. police visit. Because I do escape rooms. Right, no, this guy actually works <laughs> for them. So uh, <laughs> surprise police visit. In the first game we ever designed, the, when escape rooms were pretty new to the UK, the plot was to escape before the police arrive. Oh. Inside the game, there was an old phone that, as far as I knew, was useless and was only used to hide a voice note. Right. During a particular game, a team was playing with the phone and just left it to the side. No different than normal. 30 minutes into the game, while watching the cameras, I see two police officers enter our lobby and directly into the escape room. The team, thinking it's a pair of extremely well-costumed actors, proceed to ask, We have 30 minutes left until you arrive. Why are you here? The police look very confused, seeing a room designed to look like a criminal's home fit with stacks of cash littered on coffee tables, a realistic pistol on the sofa, empty alcohol containers on the carpet, a team of four adults all sweaty from running around doing puzzles, all to the background music from The Godfather. At this point, I've sprinted oh down goodness. the corridor in panic. Apparently the team had dialed 999 and left the phone to the side, so a nearby pair of police decided to inspect. The location at the time had an open lobby door, and the first door as you entered was after the escape room door. The officers were extremely chill about the situation, mentioning any strange calls that come from the Oxford Road are worth checking just in case. If you know the town of Red you know why, and it's not basically slough in very long street form. The team found it extremely funny. After learning phones could be pretty much always dial emergency services, it was removed. I, I, did, I didn't know, so they, what, they had the phone plugged in? Was it like an old rotary phone or something? I assume so, yeah. And I guess you could always dial 999. It's the same on mobile phones, even if you don't have, like, if you haven't paid your bill. Yeah, or yeah, whatever, you can still dial. Yeah. Stuff. You can still call emergency services. 
I've done it by accident on my phone once. Of course, everyone um, has. And but do, I think it's like those police officers. I imagine they just walk. They know where the address is. They walk up there and they just walk in. Right? They're like <laughs> yeah. the doors open. They just walk in, and then there's the door open. They just walk in. They're just peeking, the, poking their nose into things. And I guess these places don't have that much of a complicated layout, you know, because they you can't. There's not much space. Yeah. Right? Um, you rent a place to to have a business there. It's got a big room, another big room off it. It's not like it's that hard to find. And suddenly, <laughs> you know, there's like a crime scene in front of you with all these people like bagging up money or something. I, just, I like the idea that 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 is just how because well, it, it, it's the classic policeman responded to a call of no one responding on the line. Yeah, right? which they I so mean, it could be a disaster. So if you don't respond, you know, realistically. Somebody dials 999, passes out or something, and you're just like, ah, it's probably a prank. Like, you have to check it out, unfortunately. Do you, are there also those, you hear about these things that are the pizza thing as well, like um, calling the police and asking for a pizza. Yeah. is like code for I'm being held hostage. Yeah, there are a few. Um, I, I can't really? remember what. Yeah, there, there's, there's one that women are meant to use if they're in public. Um, I mean, I'm sure women know it. It's better if we don't publicize it, maybe, but you can look it up. There are certain code well, phrases that you can say to- How is uh, it bad to publicize Because what it? if someone who is uh, a uh, a violent person is listening to this and now they know the code phrase? Just saying. Right. Oh, <laughs> just, true, true. Just saying. Well, but uh, as we don't know the code phrase, and that means that probably a lot of people don't know the code exactly. phrase. Exactly. So I think in other words, have it's their own code a good phrases, secret. But that, you, go, you see sometimes in bars and stuff, there's like, you know, if you're uncomfortable, it's like ask um, for Tina or date. something like that, isn't it? Like, yeah. 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 You can go to a bar and ask for a specific thing, and then they're like, "Well, we don't have that." And you're like, "Well, I I want pizza though. I definitely yeah. want pizza." They're like, "Well, we don't serve pizza, but I would <laughs> like pizza, wink." Yeah, pizza. and they're like, "I don't know what you're talking about. This woman's asking for pizza and winking at me." <laughs> <laughs> kind of awkward. Yeah. I, uh, I yeah. So the, the second part is the, the this couple are in there. Um, the game goes pretty normal. From what I gathered, both couples have been together for a few years. However, while watching the cameras of the pro of their progress, I noticed the male from one couple and the female from the other seem to sneak into other rooms where they proceed to share little sneaky kisses, hugs, and booty pinches. Whoa, 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 whoa. So hang what? on a second. So there's two couples, two couples. Doing, doing a escape route together, except yeah. two of them are cheating with each other yeah. and sneaking off to... to, <laughs> to Oh my god, like Matt Hancock style um, cameras have caught them from above, like doing little kisses exactly. and stuff. That so is part of gross. me theorized it could be some kind of polyamorous relationship, but this was incorrect. As during a heated argument on a puzzle, out of nowhere, the woman who had not been part of the uh, the cheeky escapades shouts out to her male partner, who, who was the one being naughty, Sneaking this off. is why I cheated on you. Oh, uh, what? That, that is one awkward <laughs> escape room. What? I want to get out of there as soon as possible. Holy so shit. Sh so that's why she... Oh, no. Yeah, so he maybe this was like revenge cheating by him. Just call it off. Just break up for the what love of God. What are they doing in an escape room? Like... <laughs> You have to work together. Like, you're supposed to be team building. I think it's no. a metaphor. They're trying Not to escape like from their lives. shattering. Oh, yeah. my God. I thought, I thought the sort of, when you started going into the police thing with the escape rooms, I thought it was something to do with people being held prisoner or people being hostage. You know, just, just see what I mean? Because if you, if you didn't know what an escape room was mm. at all, you, you, you might think it was something, I don't know, like illegal going on, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it might be like you know, like like a panic room or like um like a safe house or something. <clears throat> yes, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like like an escape from crime room. Escape like, from crime. Yeah, like you've done crime and you're using that room to escape. Yeah. You know, it, it does sound. It's a cool um, name, escape room. It is a cool name. It's the cool thing. Uh, I haven't done one in ages. Yeah, I, I, I should, did I one should... relatively recently. It was it was fun enough? We should. I'll do one next time we're down in Bristol. There's some in Bristol. Yeah, yeah let's, let's do this. Do let's do one. That'll I'm be nice. You can April. come. Yeah, you we'll can come, Zips. Come down. Oh, it's in April. Unlikely. Yeah. First week yeah. of April, I'm going to be in Bristol. First week of April? Yeah. Uh, March, April. I might be able to do that, actually. That'd be pretty Someone hard. was saying that something's happening on when you're down. Oh, yeah, Ben's going on holiday for a week, but we oh, we can probably do a game. In, that's... <laughs> we can probably do a game anyway. No, um, no, so he's, gonna, on he's not leaving uh, until a few days in. So there is a, yeah, there not, are a couple of days. Leaving, I think I think we've got Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, to yeah. Do so it. we'll do it. He I, I, he showed me the game he wants to do. It looks really silly. So good. I'm oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I I know what you, you mean. Okay, it doesn't he wants good. to play a silly a game. <laughs> yeah, it's quite silly. Well, it's hard to do World War Two um, in a silly way. Yeah. But, well, they they um, managed it with this game. Well, we've got a cool cool idea.
Well, Games Night is so much fun. Oh my god, it's it's our current uh, obsession. Yeah. It's finally, we can put all of our miniatures to use, all of our <laughs> tiny toys. Yeah, God. Honestly, like, for we, I've been. I'm stood, my my recording room at the moment. I don't. You guys have seen it, but there's a wall of boxes, mm -hmm. right? And they are miniatures that I've painted or collected or bought or or, or been given over the years. And it, I can't bear myself to throw them away because I think, oh, this would make a great video one day. <laughs> I I am like a hoarder, though. It has become out of control. Because the thing is, one one piece of scenery, these are massive. You know, like it's like Lego. As soon as you start getting Lego, it takes up so much fucking space. And our office is like pretty small, really. Mm. And I feel so guilty about it because I'm supposed to be the role model of like the, the office dad. Like, you know, I'm all organized and tidy. I am the biggest child in the office. My, I'm like, if if you if you were hit round here, Pflex, you'd be telling me off like a naughty kid. Like, tidy your room. You'd be whistling. You'd be like playing a tune. Tidy your room. It's a fucking mess. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, and it looks like shit. Yeah. Like there'd be, there'd be, I'd be getting all manner of detention and grounding, and would have my own PlayStation time removed. I think is when we, when we, when we changed up the office for Jingle Jam, uh, my, I had to, I had to clear all my desk, right? I had to clean it. So I shoved everything into my recording room, right, temporarily. Right. But now it's just even worse in here, <laughs> and I can't, I can't tidy it. Um, I, I just, it's, oh, I, I'm. I just need a, I just need an hour, but as soon as I get a free hour, I look at it and I'm like, I don't want to do this. Well, how would you like to imagine a scenario where you had lots of time? Um, right. Like, for instance, in jail, as this next email is about jail. Would you well, like you to got, hear you it? Don't, you and having a lot of time jail in jail. Tidy, right? You don't well, get much shit exactly. in jail. This is, this is quite a long one, but I know that we are very interested in jail. Uh, and this is from Chris, who uh, ended we up are. in jail. We are fascinated um, by it. I think it's because it is this frightening other world that so many people have to experience. Yeah. And it's a non-zero percent chance that we might get falsely convicted of uh, some crime, you know. Exactly. Like, I mean, it's like, possible. You know, like Some financial fraud or something. What some... have you been up to, Lewis? Well, I think you see so many things on telly of people being falsely accused and being going into prison for the wrong thing or or whatever or people just holding a grudge you know yeah um setting you up that's how they got all those mafia guys who didn't do anything wrong you know, yeah yeah they were all innocent of course you yeah know? so uh a little while back we were like <laughs> send us your jail stories if you've been to jail um and this this lad did a few months for some poor decision making Right. Nothing too bad, but stupid stuff you shouldn't have done. So uh, this is an American jail, okay? When I first arrived at the jail, due to an extensive back backlog, I was forced to wait 30 hours in intake. Right. This entails sitting in a bright, cold concrete room with old sandwiches strewn across the floor. Of the entire... So it's like a holding cell, right? Yes. Anytime the... we talk about prison, I think about prison architect. And in my <laughs> mind, I'm visualizing, okay, so you've gone through... The the front the, the front entrance and yeah. you've removed your clothing and they've checked your ass and they've given you a jumpsuit and the first place you've gone is into a small holding cell holding which cell. if memory serves usually has a toilet uh, and a bench mm -hmm. and a jail door as well, well. exactly <laughs> of, the, of the entire few months in prison this was probably the most miserable part you yeah. really know you fucked up when you find yourself gazing at a slowly shriveling piece of pseudo ham while a guy in withdrawal shits his brains out on the toilet a few feet away i entertained myself by whistling doing squats and building a totem pole out of pieces of cardboard on the wall was a bunch of adverts for bail companies which i also created a mental tier list of the worst part was not having a single thing to read or do the entire time the one silver lining was that the stiff and thin jail mattress felt like heaven afterwards because I was in minimum security, rather than being placed in a one or two person cell, I was placed in a larger pod that have eight or nine bunks all crowded together in a large room with a single shared bathroom and shower. A total of three pods would make up the tier and two tiers would make up the building, one on top of the other. While this initially seemed like a bad thing, it turned out to be better than expected. My pod mates were relatively chill, with only a single fight breaking out during my whole time there. The pod wow. had collected a lot of good books, including the Red Rising series, which I read. And there were a few solid chess players who I could play each night. As a result of the long timers and the pod father being chill, the pod itself was never violent and they worked to keep drugs out of our area, although alcohol was another story. Food. The jail food was very bad. Now I've heard about this call time that they have and it's insane. 
They get woken up at 5 a.m. to have breakfast at 5.30. It usually consisted of some oatmeal-like goo, a few tiny nasty sausages, some milk on the brink of going sour, and the most flavorless potatoes you could possibly imagine. Lunch at 11.30 is a pseudo ham sandwich or a PB&J, with a few soggy cookies and maybe an orange if you are lucky. Dinner at 4.30 would almost always be some combination of rice, beans, and mushy broccoli stems. It is impossible for me to describe how little flavor there was in the food. You could not create less flavorful food if you tried. Tried. I genuinely think scientists must have worked in a lab for years to devise some sort of sinister device for extracting all the flavor. Even people who'd served time across the country would say it was the worst at this jail. Swamping the food in commissary bought hot sauce and pepper packets, which you had to buy one at a time, was the only way to make it bearable. The foil wow. to this was the inmate made food. Okay, oh. so prison cooking is a thing. Which is funny because there's an Alan Partridge cooking in prison, which is like one of the pictures that he makes. Never in my mm -hmm. life have I seen such culinary miracles crafted from such a ragtag array of ingredients. And man, would they spend a lot of time on these meals. While many would opt for a simple pork rinds in refried rice and beans, or the popular jail classic, the Manwich, which is Raymond noodles between two slices of bread, many would spend hours crafting intricate recipes, ranging from sweet and sour chicken, which is instant rice, ramen noodles, chicken ramen seasoning, apple and grape jelly, pork rinds, hot sauce, jalapenos, and lemon juice, to full-on stacked and cooked burritos that would be filled with $15 worth of commissary items, instant rice, refried beans, jalapenos, summer sausages, squeezed cheese, and more, meticulously wrapped in a highly skilled procedure, and then delivered to the pod workers, which is inmates who had the jobs cleaning and setting up the meals, who would bring the burritos oh, down to the oven, man. smuggle them in there to cook them. So you would smuggle them in to cook them in the prison kitchen, and then yeah. they'd bring you back the burritos. So they love those, apparently. There's also the jail economy. Some interesting tidbits. Basic commissary items could be traded for each other at all times, simply based on the price of the items. Most universal is a package of Raymond, which inmates call soups. You could buy 24 of these for seven ducks bucks on Amazon, they cost one thirty-seven at the jail commissary. The most desired were the instant coffee and honey buns, which is like a popular dessert. There were three real industries, uh, drugs, alcohol, and art. Uh, drugs were done very <laughs> under the table and would rarely see them. Uh, almost all the drug trading was of suboxone, a drug given to inmates dealing with withdrawal, so they would trade those. Right. Alcohol, uh, they would do the, the pruno. We've spoken about pruno extensively. They do pruno and burp the machine to let the gases out and stuff like that. So they so still pruno make pruno. is the, the prison, prison wine, prison not wine. Yes, wine. Yeah, yeah it's, it's called pruno, I don't know why. Uh, and they do it with the fizzy, sort of pulpy orange stuff. And the opposite side of the alcohol and drugs was the art industry. Each inmate was ultimately trying to combat the desolation of being in jail and being separated from their families. And while they would often choose drugs and alcohol, sometimes they'd choose art instead. And wow. the inmates Fuck would me. spend the this long hours- so I know, Lewis wants to go <laughs> so bad now. <laughs> they would do he coloring books, walk around and show their art to their friends. And in the days before holidays, some inmates would begin selling paper mache roses and hearts, as well as accurate drawings of Disney characters for people to mail to their families as a gift. Uh, it was an Jeez. unexpectedly sweet and slightly somber piece of the jail experience. <clears throat> that is man, interesting. Oh man, that is interesting. That That's, is awesome. It's crazy, isn't it? It's just, it is a different world and one that you uh, don't want to ever experience, I'd imagine, right? Like, uh, like it's like uh, in Aladdin, a whole new world, but it is. Not, and, and he says, don't you dare close your eyes, but maybe if you are in that whole new world, you will want to close your eyes. You may well want to. I love the idea that, that they're there. in there. Yeah. Like still, even then, in that desperate situation, human beings are like, I just want to make some art. I just want to make some Disney characters for my kids. <laughs> some light in the darkness. Yeah. What, what is that? What is that? Um, I'm sure there's a few TV shows where the, the warden commissions some artist to do a picture of his wife. Yeah, and Shawshank yeah. Redemption. Remember when the guy's like, hey, make me a make me a world class chess set and uh Andy That's Dufresne it. starts he starts whittling, whittling. I don't think he's he's not making it for the warden. Sure. He's he is. making it for himself now because the, no. the they come in and uh, and they let it's him. It's never explicitly it. said that he's not that he's making it for him, but he's making it for him. No, he's not. He hates the warden. He fucking yeah, he know, already does the... his accounting. Oh yeah. He does it's his been his such a long time since I've seen that movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, a good in one. Uh, in um, uh, Escape from Alcatraz, the Clint Eastwood uh, prison yes. escape movie. Yeah. The, there's a guy in there who does a painting of the warden, and the warden hates it so much he takes away the, all the guy's art supplies, and the, the guy cuts his fingers off with a hatchet and goes crazy. That, that's right. Yeah. yeah. It's really horrible. That's a that's a great movie, actually. That really is a really one. good movie. Yeah, a true a story really too. One. A true story. Escape from Alcatraz. Yeah. Starring classic, Clint 70s Eastwood. Classic. Yeah.
so this is uh this is about Delaware, which we I think you mentioned it briefly. It might have been you, Sips, actually mentioned uh, Delaware on one of the previous mailbags. We've had a, <laughs> one email from a Delawarean. I don't think they're particularly uh, passionate people about their state. Right. But this lad is. Um, a Delawareite? A Delawarean. A Delawarean. It's got to be a Delawarean. It's a Delawarean. Right? Uh, this is from Wendell. Hey, uh, uh, the name's Wendell. I don't want to make this too long, but figured you'd like some insight into the second smallest state in the US, Delaware. Sure. I've lived here since 1993, so I've got some inside knowledge for you. First thing I wanted to do was clarify Sips's tax-free comment. Just in case you don't know, states don't put sales tax on prices, so you don't really know the total of stuff like groceries until you check out. In Delaware, there is no sales tax. So wow. what you see is what you pay. We still pay state, federal, and social security taxes, but there's yeah, no of course, sales tax. Yeah. Yeah. Delaware is the first state, because they were the first state to ratify the go. Constitution back in 1776. Okay, we covered sure. this. We covered this. We did. It's a, it, it, we did indeed. The cities here are so incredibly varied for somewhere so small. Newark, for example, is a massive college town thanks to the University of Delaware. This is, must be different from the Newark in, in New Jersey. Yeah. Um, while no more than 15 miles west is Wilmington, which for a while had the highest rate of crime per capita of any city in the US. An Ooh, hour, an hour Wilmington, south. Wilmington, Delaware. Wilmington. Uh, an hour south and you get to what's called Slower Lower Delaware, where we have some folk as backwards as they come, but the majority are kind of considerate people. DuPont is a chemical producer based here that's gone on to develop materials such as Teflon, Dacron, yeah. and Lycra, but fuck yeah. DuPont. You shouldn't be proud of that. No, you should not be. Yeah. Uh, they are a terrible, terrible they company. They are dreadful people. Rehoboth Beach is pretty shit, but what can you do? All in all, I love Delaware and recommend anyone to visit if they get the chance. Right. Yeah, maybe not. Thanks, Wendell. That's uh, the <laughs> only email we had about Delaware. Flax is adding that to his list of no-go areas, yeah, uh, which no. is quite extensive if you've listened to the podcast before. And now Delaware is on Delaware there, too. Is on there, but yeah. purely from a boredom angle. Like, yeah, it sounds no, that's boring. fair enough. That's fair enough. So the nicknames of Delaware are the first state, yeah. the, the small wonder, the diamond state, oh. and the blue hen state. Nice. And, uh, uh, I want to know like all this crap about states. If you're from a state and you know a lot about it, you've got quirky info, please yeah. send that into the mailbag. But make it interesting. Fun. Like, not Wait too for long, us to ask as well. Pub. Yeah, please. We don't want just random emails about Rhode Island or whatever. Like, well, now we you mentioned Rhode Island, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, I'm not asking about it, though. I don't really want to know about Rhode Island yet. There's, At some I point, think, I'm sure I will, though. Well, there's one state which is um, Michigan, which is where, you're, where they're known as, like, a Michigander. Oh, right. wow. From there, uh, which is a bit of a weird suffix. I think there's a bunch, because most of them are, like... Um, you know, like Californian or uh, Alaskan, right? Yeah. But there's there's a there's a few which are ites as well. I think it's it is it Chicago ites. I, I thought they'd be called Michigosh, but sure, Michi Michigandian, Sh Michigandian is fine. Yeah. And I think I think New York. But Chicago is uh, a city, so you wouldn't really say. Uh, I guess New York's a city, and they they call them New Yorkers, right? Yeah, you're a Chicagoan, aren't you? Chicagoan. Chicago I don't think that that, that name is really uh, good for you know, doing that kind of stuff with it, you know, like adding like a, 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 an EN on the end of yeah, it or whatever. it's an awkward it, word. It is so awkward. Yeah. Hey, I'm a New Yorker. I'm yeah, New Yorker is fine. Like, yeah, New York is Yorker. perfect. Yeah. But then they also have Vermonter, Maine, New Hampshire, yeah. right, maybe? But I'm I'm from Ottawa. Like, what's that, an Ottawaite? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, it's, it, it, it's another one. Also one. <laughs> it, it ends with an A, so it's really hard to add... It, to make it not awkward and add, and he just put an N on the end. Ottawa, Ottawa, Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, this is uh, this is a nice one. I I, I would like to take um <clears throat> the, them up on this. First, thank you for taking the time to read my email. Uh, I don't remember if that if you're referring to this one or a different one, Patrick. But thank you. I'm a fully trained and qualified goldsmith slash jeweler, uh, and I'm trying cool. to start up my own business with the help of my boyfriend Patrick, who you wow. might know from the past as Dark Side Pat, uh, because his mum made him go to bed whilst playing a game of Dota. So that was a uh, an episode that was something that we covered in 2014. I did a 2014. video where that was that. Dark Side Pat had to go to bed because his mum made him go to bed. That's so funny in the middle of a game. He was uh, in mid-game and his mom had to go to bed. made yeah. him go to bed. That's oh right. Oh my god, when he was playing with you. Yeah, and there's, a, there's a video. Of That's the so good. The, the Week in Flax episode 2, you look it up, Dark Side Pat must feature in there. Uh, um, so uh, they'd love so to make us ten, jewelry. Almost 10 years ago. Yeah, Holy but they, crap. they've offered She's... to make us some jewelry. At no make charge. A, make a necklace uh, like with a lot of bling on it. And, uh, you know, like it's done in the Curse of Right. You know, like sometimes they put like... Uh, 
I don't know, like juicy or whatever. It's like a medallion with like the word juicy written on it. Make a medallion that says time for bed on it and then put like a bunch <laughs> of diamonds and stuff like, uh, you know, really like bling it out. I think that would be perfect. I just want a, a quite a long Go to bed. plain necklace. I, I like I like long necklaces, preferably one that reaches down to the middle of my chest. Right. I, I, I've got... So you're just you just want a load of gold. No, it doesn't have to be gold. <laughs> Obviously, I love gold, but that's very hey, expensive. So, uh... I, I hear you're making me a free gold necklace. I'd like a lo I'd like a, the longest the gold longest, chain. The longest, thickest gold chain you got. No, it can be made of anything. I don't care. A nice, a nice necklace for me to wear. I do love. What do you necklaces. mean a necklace? A necklace. What I like long about? necklaces. Well, they're offering mean, to make us jewelry. What do you mean a long necklace? I, I need to know more about this. Like, what what kind of thing are we talking here? What's what does it look like? Like a like a like a sweaty hairy man chain. You know, like the one sort of thing a Greek, with a... a Greek lad would wear. So, uh, hello, I am Costas. I make your coffee. And uh, Gyro, what do you want? Chili sauce? Like that. The kind of thing that he would wear. Yeah. The kind of long <laughs> right. thing. While you're walking your like b bulldog out on the street. Exactly. You know, with your top I want, I want a, right. nice, a nice long chain. A nice long chain. Mm. Uh, what, what do you want, Lulu? Um, a, a pinky ring, I think. Or something to go on his pinky toe. Like a, I, a toe no, ring. Like I'd, have, I'd have an earring. <laughs> I, I'd have an, an earring? earring? You yeah. do you, if you get an earring, mate, I'm stopping this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning it around and we're going home. He's well, it'll be it like a, it'll be like a Ronaldo diamond stud. No, don't do this. it. Don't don't ever get an earring. Oh my god, I would lose what, all what? respect for you. Well, I, I, what do you mean? I got um, I got I got I could pull it off. No, don't, don't do it. Please. What about like a mouthpiece with gold teeth? Like uh, <laughs> like a like, like, like the, yeah, <laughs> like a yeah, like a, like you, like like ODB used to have one, and I'm pretty yeah. sure Method Man used to use one as Fuck well. Me. Get yes, one of those. Right, sure. Or or maybe a giant fucking clock. A uh, giant gold clock. That's yeah. what I was going to ask for. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, you get the some... mouthpiece, I'll get the clock, and then Flax will have the medallion. And then when we combine together, like Voltron, we'll form a wrapper. Do they have a link to their stuff? And also, by the way, don't send us stuff for free. We'll pay if if you're if you're talented and 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 we'll, we'll, we'll pay. Like I, I hate doing. I hate getting like that sort of stuff. Don't don't. Well, I'd, like, it, a, I'd like to put in a counterpoint support, here. I love I getting free stuff. I want to support fan-made stuff. Mm. Free stuff is my favorite stuff, so... Yes. Oh, I see. They do custom designs. Oh, that's oh. the point. Oh. Right. Custom designs for free as well. God, I like mm. that. Yeah, but obviously, don't don't send a solid gold necklace. That's going to cost you a fortune. Just something nice. That's all I'm saying. Or counterpoint... I mean, do send one if it, <laughs> I'm counterpoint. with a bill. Yeah, well, no, yes. with if no you bill. send us anything, send a bill. As no, well. no, no bill. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, gold's God. expensive, dude. Exactly. God, I so expensive. love the mailbag. Do you know how much a gold coin costs these days? Uh, no, a gold and one ounce of gold. It's how much does one pounds. golden shilling cost these uh, days? Well, these day, a, a golden shilling, probably, probably, a, probably like a hundred pound. Wow. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let, this, here's another email. This is from Ollie. You could buy a Nintendo game with that much money. You could. <laughs> My partner and I. <laughs> Drove up to the Lake District, which took roughly seven hours from London. We booked an Airbnb, which was a bespoke made cabin on wheels on a farm. Sure, once this is very arrived, common nowadays. Once we arrived, there was nobody in sight, so we let ourselves in. <clears throat> I laid down uh -oh. on the bed, and my partner went to the toilet. At that point, I went to find the contact number for the Airbnb owner, but it immediately noticed from the photographs that we were not in the right cabin. I told oh, my no. partner we need to leave immediately. But then found out she was mid poo. Once oh, the no. bowels were released into the toilet, we noticed the toilet was not connected to any plumbing, and, oh, ne no. and neither were any of the taps. And oh, upon our hasty no. departure, noticed the cabin was purely a showroom and had to leave the excrement in the dry toilet. Oh, we finally no. found the correct cabin and settled in. I physically couldn't look at the Airbnb owner as I would burst out laughing because my partner left a shit in her showroom. My partner, under cover of darkness went back to the showroom and extracted the poop, put it in an Whoa. empty marshmallow bag and flushed it down a functional toilet. That was the highlight of our trip. Gosh, I'm That's sorry to hear. That's so Jesus. good that you went back and fixed this. Yeah, well done. Well what done. An on honorable that. fucking action. That, yeah. that has got you so much karma. In the afterlife, you are going to be reincarnated as like a fucking stag or whatever. <laughs> you not as like a worm. remember that experience you know I mean? for the rest of your life as well. You will, you will oh. never forget that. What a heroic decision as well. Like you, you don't have to feel guilty. You fixed it yeah. under cover of darkness, like a fucking stealth. Could you imagine getting caught though? Could you imagine shit like, in a marshmallow bag? Can you imagine as like, well? like leaning over the toilet with a <laughs> picking up a shit and like someone turning the torch on? Oh, oh my God, the police coming.
Oh, oh that'd be, that would be Jesus. That would be something. Christ, Christ, that would be something yeah. All right, oh, this, this is another one. This is, we had a chat about tigers versus polar bears. Yes, um, we did. And uh, in a recent podcast, you guys were discussing which animals would win in a fight. We, we try to stay away from this because it's a very boring topic, really. But it, they it hate does each come other. Up. They do. Tigers and polar bears. <laughs> Famous so. enemies. Famously. I yeah. can confirm, this is according to Marco, that it would be a tiger. Uh, a friend of my parents witnessed a tiger killing a polar bear at a circus in Cornwall when the animal handlers lost control. And this is uh, a picture from a news clipping dated 7th of August 1969. Circus tiger kills bear. Bodmin audience told to keep calm. A tiger okay, attacked and killed a two-year-old uh, polar bear valued at a thousand pounds during Monday's performance at Rico's Circus, which was making its first visit to Bobman at the start of a Cornish tour. So there you go. Okay, but was the bear ready to fight, though? Like, I'm under the assumption that these these animals are both ready to fight to the death, right? Like, I feel like in that case, the tiger was ready to fight, and maybe the bear was like, oh, what's going on? You know, like, and didn't fight back? Well, uh, I don't think it was a fair fight. The it's... tiger jumped on the bear and yeah. broke its neck. Right. Well, that's not oh fair. God. They didn't yeah. have like the broke his neck like a fucking ninja. They didn't have yeah. like a ref to say you know three, two, one, fight or anything <laughs> like that. That doesn't sound like a fair fight. Like I mean, I'd probably win a fight too if I had the opportunity to break somebody's neck before the fight started. You know what I mean? It sounds like it was done accidentally. Do you know what I mean? I think they both went for the same piece of meat, and the cat was just it just didn't realize how heavy he was and, and crushed him. Just crushed him. Probably felt terrible about it. Yeah, they were probably mates. Maybe they yeah. were. Yeah. You know. Maybe, maybe maybe they just like, had a dispute. You know, like that circus sort of circus, you know, community. You know, they they probably were like they might have even loved one another. <laughs> sure. Maybe, maybe they did. You know. So I don't know if we could really say that that is evidence of. Um, that's, that's one a, instance. It's not a fair fight. No, we'll chalk not. that one down. That is murder. Yeah. I mean, that's it, not a I fight. I mean, they do live a long way apart, and it's hard to organize that cage fight. So, I mean, if we crowdfunded it, we could get the fight of the century: tiger yeah. versus polar bear. See, I'm right. thinking Fucking... if you want a fair fight, you got to get them both really riled up, too. You know, like uh, you got to like probably starve them a bit, get them riled up, get them snarling at each other and stuff, so they know that they're gonna fight. Really, yeah, yeah like show them pictures really of the get other them one to the point the where it's like we're stuff. opening these doors and one of you is gonna die, sort of thing, right? Yeah, get that, them pumped up. That is a fair fight, okay? What happened there is not, in my opinion, fair. Like the the tiger got the jump, the bear wasn't ready, and immediately broke its neck. That's not a fight. That is. This might be like part of my cynical worldview, but. If, if we did launch some Kickstarter for this thing, right? It, we could we'd do be arrested immediately. They kick us off Kickstarter, so we'd make our own we'd, platform. We'd probably to do be it, deported right? as well. I don't we'd think this would go down well. We'd find an alternative platform, right? And then, then you, there'd be all this outcry, but loads of people would put money in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because uh, <laughs> that's the way the world works, right? I can imagine tons of people would put money into this fucking stupid shit idea. Uh, just a casual animal cruelty. It's a lot of people are just like, ah, fuck the environment. Ah, fuck yeah, the world. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to put money there, though, because it really does associate them immediately with uh, something awful, you know? Like, not, And I'm yeah, not talking about the website here, either. I'm talking. People love doing that with the internet, generally. They're all, you know, truth social and all this shit. Do you know what I, mean? I guess like, it's so, all, yeah. It's all the- everyone's already associated themselves with terrible things. True. What can true. they do? Yeah, true. All right. Anyway, great, great, great letter. Yeah, Thank good you. Job. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, this is from Louis. This is Kids with Funny Names at School. Right. Um, I've recently been listening to the backlog of podcasts again. In episode 138, you briefly had a chat about kids with funny names who get bullied at school after talking about Neville Longbottom. Yeah. 138. God, that's a long way back. That is a long way back. Uh, yeah. We had a few good ones. We had Abby Dixon, who got called Scabby Dickskin. Uh, oh. Which is Pretty funny at the time. That's real, uh, our real PE bad. teacher was called Mr. Crookshank, so he got called Mr. Crookwank. Pretty low, <laughs> bit, yeah, low yeah, hanging fruit. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, one of the more wholesome ones. There was an Afghani refugee called Manure Butt, um, but in a moment of humanitarian decency, he was never made fun of. Right. Uh, so his name literally looks like Manure, like Manure, and then Butt, and it was pronounced Manure Butt. And but no, he was a cool guy. Well, he, he was, was an cool Afghan guy. refugee. They were like, this lad's already been through enough. Oh my god. Okay. So I'm That's trying to think bad. of kids at school who had names that were made fun of. Um, 
Let me think. You said he wasn't a cool guy. <laughs> I have no idea. That that's not mentioned is all I'm saying. Okay. I'm not no, gonna I'm not both, gonna you know. he could, but I'm not gonna go and say that he was a cool guy. We, because uh, I don't know that. All I know is that they didn't make fun of him. That's that's yeah, I'm going off that. I just go based on the evidence. We had a Bron win at school, which um where I mean uh, this is in uh this is in Canada in, in Ontario. It's a very Welsh name, Bronwyn. Uh, we'd never come across anything like it before, but anyway, her name was Bronwyn. Uh -huh. And uh, we used to call her Brown Wind. <laughs> That's a classic. It's a classic. That's a classic. I, it must be. I don't. I don't like any of the. Um. I don't like any of the yoga, like y yoga or India or river or like um Bodhi or something like that. Or you Bodhi. Know, I don't like any of those those types of names. Like right. right, but we're names. not talking about names that you like. We're saying names that kids at your school had that were made fun of. Oh, like Brown Wind. Yeah, like I don't think we had many. Neville Longbottom. I mean, my last Steve name Woodcock. obviously. <laughs> The, my name Forsyth meant oh good game, good game. Got you know Bruce Forsyth impressions all oh, the time. See. But uh, that that was not too bad. Um, uh, trying to think of kids with really there was a kid called, called whose last name um, sounded like a vegetable, like a, a root vegetable. So we right. made fun of him, but he turned out to be the biggest bully in the year and kicked all our asses. And off. you're still scared of telling us his it, name? Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna say his name. James Potato. It was not uh, James Potato, but it was <laughs> James like, Potato. <laughs> he he, he oh, arrived man. at the school in the second year. Andy, he Sugar wasn't there beat. in the first year. Second year, <laughs> and oh no, no, this was the first. Sorry, Tony. This, this Carrot. was the first year. What here's what he did. All of us made fun of his <laughs> did name. Did you say Tony Carrot? Tony Carrot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All Tony of us Carrot. made fun of his name. And one lunchtime, Mate, he Inspector got his brother. Tony Carrot. He sounds like a BBC. I'll stop fucking... telling this story. Fuck Michael Sweet on. Potato. That's right. You just want to say Tony Carrot over and over again, fucking idiot. <laughs> Sorry, start again. Sorry. No. Sorry. So no. So he joined in the second no. year or some shit. Whatever. Here yeah. we go. Lewis's trip to Centre Parks. Uh, I'll keep oh, it brief. It out. No, oh. I want to hear this story. Oh, now. I want to hear you no, guys, you don't want to hear you. this we story. Love you you don't want to hear this story. It's, oh, not, do, it's, it's not worth telling now. All it's right, not going to live up to Why? it. Why? The letters. We're going to get so many letters about uh, this. Uh, on a recent episode of Triforce, Lewis detailed... Uh, uh, sorry, going to centre park. Regale the public trip to centre park. One part that stood out was that he said he went on the lazy river two hundred times. Right. Uh, okay, they've calculated that, that this means that at an average of two and a half minutes per cycle, you would have had to have been on the lazy river for eight hours and twenty minutes. That's possible. Actually, that, I feel like I I've mean, been on that long easily it was in a one bit session. Of an exaggeration, but over the course of the week. Probably, actually. yeah. Over the course of a week, that's not actually impo it, at, at all yeah. impossible. Like that's it, very doable. You There's go not on much that. else there. You, yeah, that's it. You go on for hours, especially if you got kids who are like, the minute you've started the course, they're like, "Can we go on again?" Like, you know, you're yeah. going to be on there for eight hours, probably. Also, the lazy river is quite a short one, actually, and it's so co it was so cold outside that it was like, as soon as you got out of it, you were like. The, the, the nearest place to get back into the water was to go back on the lazy river. So you ended up like. <laughs> Did you ever get a face like, full of ass when you were on that? Because, you know, like people are constantly bashing into each other and stuff. Like, you know, like. It wasn't that busy. They don't actually. wait their well, turn. There, was, there wasn't. I never. There was, there was no hardly anyone yeah. on it, really. So it wasn't too bad. Um, Unfortunate. No, I didn't, you could have. Yeah. I unfortunately did not get a face full you of ass. You could have had yeah. a face full ass there. But for I, free. I remain hopeful. Yeah. All right, th this is uh, an email about your new age escapades, Lewis. Okay. okay. Uh, I feel like as someone who grew up around a lot of yoga heads and spiritual people, as well as someone who did drama uh, as one of my A-level subjects, I may be able to shed some light on Lewis's experience with the earth ritual. Um, the thing with imagining a body part and the sound it would make uh, if it could vocalize is a common technique used by actors both in warming up and for expression. It's used to loosen up the vocal cords and break down nervous barriers. The whole point of it is it's slightly ridiculous as, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, prepares you for what might be even more ridiculous in the performance that you have to do. Um, during a performance, many actors find focusing on a body part and directing their voice through it to be a useful tool and characterization. Apparently the aunt, Auntie Donna, you know Auntie Donna? You heard of that podcast? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love them. They talk about it a lot on that, so. Um, as it, far yeah, as uh, the that question- That makes sense. That, I think you, it is about doing, it's like doing something communally awkward. That, yeah. That you, you, there is a lot of this in in various other situations to make everyone comfortable. And I think when you're looking in from the outside, sometimes it can seem very ludicrous. Like um like those people who do the forced laughter or whatever. You know, if you just capture that, it feels super weird. But I think you could do that easily as a team building exercise that's to to, to just if everyone knows it's not serious, um it's it's quite good to 
Yeah, it so breaks down the, a bit less. Gets it you does. a bit loose, doesn't definitely, it? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, and That's I think, good, as, good you insight. know what, as well, I think good, um, good insight. If, if you guys have to, if a group of people all have to do something embarrassing one at a time, you, I think that builds empathy because you're like, well, I, I know we look stupid, but I know I'm going to look stupid in a minute as well. And we're all going to have to do this. So it almost builds a kind of camaraderie where you're all like, we're all in this together acting like idiots. I've done things like that where you break down, uh, you know, sort of uh, barriers of sort of everybody's very stiff, especially British people, all sort of like, oh, hello. Oh, hello. And then once you start acting a fool a bit, everybody kind of relaxes. So I can see why that's important. Um, so here's a, as to the question Sips and Flash asked about whether this helped the other people in the ritual, I'd say that's asking the wrong question. Most people attending, except Lewis and that one woman, were there to experience something meditative. Having done lots of yoga and strange new activities and rituals, um, the common thread with most of these is that one tends to emerge from them feeling extremely refreshed. So, did you not feel refreshed, Lulu? Uh, no. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, so if not refreshed, then how did you feel? I uh felt fine. I think it was it was a it was a nice day out. It was something different. That's always nice. You know, it's it's nice. It's, it is nice to. It felt like I'd been to a botanical garden or something. And I had a nice walk around with some nice people and some nice experience. You know, I saw some things. It was nice. Like it was. Do you know what I mean? It was like you'd been somewhere you hadn't been before. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it regularly, like or, or go maybe ever go again. Mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But like, I, I, I like personally doing something I've never done, and so that to me is is entertainment enough. Right. I think I think I like I said you should be commended for doing something unusual and new. So good, good shout. Thank um, you. This is uh this is um from Jack who's emailed in many times uh hoping for some relationship advice uh from and this is this oh, is God. their wording the two break up with her two <laughs> happily <laughs> married <laughs> Moira, Moira. <laughs> wait till you hear from the two happily married men and the minge magnet himself Lewis that's the new title. Minge magnet that he's given to you. I've yeah, so but got... unfortunately, my 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 I'm polarized to them. The yes. same polarity is there. That's unfortunate. Uh, minge, so I drive them away. Yes, I recently <laughs> I got repel. engaged to my fiance. Hell, all women. <laughs> she is beautiful, funny, and caring. But last night, I discovered something about her. I'm not sure I can go ahead with the wedding. Was hoping for some of your advice. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, is this a serious email? It doesn't sound like it. We were watching television, and James Corden came on screen. Oh no! I, oh, no. I groaned, and she defended him, describing him as funny, and saying how much she likes James Corden. Even typing this out, I feel sick. My fiance likes. Likes James Corden. What do I do? Do I just escape in the middle of the night, or should I speak to her about this and hope she eventually becomes rational? I this think, is a tough one. I feel like uh, it. I, I feel like it, it's a journey, right? I think just leave it and see what happens because I don't think anybody can long term like James Corden. I think I think he's probably charming enough for you to think momentarily that you like him, but just give it time, and I think she'll she'll ditch him. That's my advice. I don't think anybody, I, I don't think James Corden has staying power with people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he is charming at all. I think every time I see him, he makes me feel like I'm going to be sick. Yeah, but that's because you you know him, right? Like you, 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 you're aware of him and, and already hate him. But like but the, she's aware of him. She's like, oh, I like James Corden. Like she's seen enough of James Corden to form an opinion. This wasn't the first time she'd seen James Corden. I she think, thinks I think James Corden about is funny. This all wrong. Okay, I think that means she has terrible, terribly low standards, which means <laughs> that she's not leaving you, right? You know, she is. Yeah, you, you are. Even you're probably a fucking Brad Pitt to James Corden, right? Everyone is so. So like you, do you know what I mean? Like she is, <laughs> this is a good thing. All right. Just think of it like that. I don't, I don't, I, I would be honest with you. If it was early on in a relationship, early enough on. And I, I think to me, it's a deal breaker. <laughs> really? No. <clears throat> yeah. You've got to understand people don't know. Like people don't know that other that people on t TV are awful. Like I can't watch stuff with certain celebrities in because I know things about them. And that it just hasn't come out yet. feels like. No, it's not you know. even that. It's not even who he is behind. It's, it's here's the thing. If you can look at James Corden on television and not immediately be repulsed, my concern is what else are you into that is Lots appalling? of people like Ant and Deck and all this other crap because they don't they don't care. Like yeah. they don't even think enough to worry about. No. Um, she probably likes Mrs. Brown's boys. I think, in fact, that exactly. would be more impressive. Uh, this is what I'm saying. Yeah, she Mrs. Does. Brown's boys, James <laughs> Corden, let's, actually, let's all test of her on a few other things that yeah, are, we are indicators more. of terrible taste, yeah. and then see if you can handle it. Because it, you know, if, if it turns out that you know her Saturday night, does viewing... she watch The Apprentice? 
Right, exactly. That could be an interesting um, one too. That could be see? another red flag. Yeah, yeah. You need to get a list of a list of things that she's pro and anti. Yeah, I think in if terms you can get of the light green entertainment flag list. Like if she likes always sunny and you know and 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 curb and you know other things. But I think just just write a list of a, a for and against this marriage, um, and just see if the fours outweigh the James Corden thing. Because that I mean you could write that one on there as like times five. Um, you know that is a, it's a serious red flag. But my my man, you'll be all right. It's worse things. Than the world. I think there Get is the hell out of there. I think there yeah. is yeah. worse things in the world. Honestly, taking a shit in a show home toilet. Yeah, yeah that's pretty, pretty <laughs> bad finding one. a shit in a coffee cup underneath uh, Center Park's bed could be uh, <laughs> up there too. It could be a pretty bad one. <laughs> There's a red flag. Yeah, and uh, going to a, go to an escape room with her, and she keeps disappearing off with your friends, uh, your your friend, your, your friend's partner. Yeah, that and then she comes back. Flag. She comes back into the escape room, and she's pregnant. That's a red <laughs> flag as well. You need to watch out for stuff like that. And then the police turn up. And then the police, t- um, yes, because oh because they've called the police on the on the on phone. the perpetrator. Yeah, they well, yeah they yeah. on the police to to let them know. Anyway, the thanks police. for writing in. Uh, and good luck. Good luck good with luck that. Good luck with your marriage. Good luck with that. Um, yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is uh, from Twan. Uh, in Mailbag 27, while explaining an Instagram reel about scowling Germans, Lewis used the phrase, resting bitch face. Yes. This absolutely, yes. This absolutely grinds my gears. Right. Right. I am not blaming Lewis for saying it wrong. At least half the world's population is mixing this up. The correct phrase is, bitchy resting face. Bitchy in, resting face. When your face is resting, it's also looking bitchy. Right. If you say resting bitch face, you're implying that someone has a permanent bitch face, which at this moment simply happens to be in a resting state. Lots of love from the Netherlands. Twang. I think I think this is this. OK, some people don't smile very much and aren't very visual, like aren't very much aren't like very dramatic with their face, facial movements. Right. And those people who you see their ordinary face more look um just look less bitchy. Do you see what I mean? Like, whereas if you've got someone who's really outgoing and smiley all the time, um, and then you see them just looking normal, looking busy, looking working, they automatically look more bitchy, right? So I think it's a it's a symptom of how outgoing that person is to start with, whether or not their normal face looks bitchy. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, bitchy resting <laughs> face makes more sense to me. Bitch, bitchy resting bitchy face, resting I face. think, actually sounds better too. Some people do have, like, naturally a bit of a turned down mouth when they are resting. Do you know what I mean? Some people have... That's a face a, like a smacked arse, though. That's a, a, yeah, the term a, for that one. Yeah, an ugly expression yeah. when yeah. they're resting. But I think a lot of people have like quite cool resting face. Yeah. You know, I, I like think Clint a lot of Eastwood people... on the topic of <laughs> yeah. Clint Eastwood. He's got that, like, you know, you can't... You look at his face and he's like wincing a bit. It looks like the sun is always in his eyes. Yeah. He's got his mouth just slightly open. And you just think, is this guy shitting his pants or... Yeah, <laughs> resting he, bitch he... face doesn't mean resting ugly face. It, it sort of means, or ugly resting face. It means like, cause sometimes that's cool. A lot of people go for that look. You know, yeah. like a lot of people don't smile on purpose. See, I think St- Billy I, Eilish. I think Stallone has a, an incredible bitchy resting face. He just his face looks like he's gurning all the he time. He just looks it's all like the fucking growth hormone. It must be, bit. yeah. But he looks like he actually just kind of looks like he's in pain all the time. Like, mm. uh, like he has that that look about him. Yeah, this is uh, from a naval nuclear mechanic. Wow. This is a lad on a submarine. Uh, been sure. a long time listener since the Yogpod episodes. Uh, this lad works uh, in, in the American Navy. While we're going through the pipeline of study and undergoing our sea duty, we have about 14 to 16 days of uh, hour days, seven days a week during their qualifications. When you become qualified on your boat, then your days turn into eight hours of standing watch and eight hours of maintenance while the ship is underway. Right. The food is decent, uh, a lot less people to cook for than a carrier, so it's easier for culinary specialists to make the food better. Um, and they said it's pretty good. And apparently this lad's favorite was Shepherd's pie get shepherd's pie on there shepherd's pie options for exercise is limited to minimize noise but my boat had some kettlebells and a smith machine whatever that is but for the most part we're doing push-ups and pull-ups every so often on watch the reactor works by taking a hot rock that's the fuel we know what we know what fucking nuclear rods are making steam and using the steam to spin the electric turbine yeah we know when he then says hot rock makes sparky spark roundy roundy we're not idiots. <laughs> we are. Oh. We, thank you we're for that. Thank you for thank breaking you. it down for us. 
The well, it's not rocket science, is it? No, it's the nuclear science. The culture of uh, Navy nukes <laughs> is pretty strange, ranging from people getting nuke-specific tattoos to body pillows uh, of Admiral Hyman G. Rickover, who is the father of the nuclear navy. That's utterly bizarre. Lots of people play D&D and Magic the Gathering, but for the most part, we just watch movies while underway. Um, sleeping arrangements are four bunks stacked vertically, each with a curtain and a small locker. Uh, there are occasions where people need to hot rack, where one sailor gets up from his shift, someone coming off there will take his rack. Uh, submarines are a lot bigger than you expect, three stories tall and very long. However, there's nowhere to hide because you're never very far from another person. Um, so yeah, it sounds terrible. I don't think I'd ever go on board a submarine again. I went on board one in Turkey at a naval museum or a military museum there, they had a Turkish submarine you could go on board. It was tiny, it was cramped. And as soon as I got on, I realized I really shouldn't have done this because I really do get claustrophobic. Yeah. And I did the tour and I was like, what the fuck was I thinking? I got out of there as quick as I could. Suffice it to say, those little submarines are unbearable. I think people, you would have to be a very special yeah, kind of person. I wouldn't want to, to eat, like the one that went down uh, to look at the Titanic and stuff. There's no way I could ever. Oh, no way. There's, it, no it's just way. impossible. I would be crying. I would be shitting. I'd be farting. I would be, I, I would be a total wreck. And I would yeah. not enjoy a single second of it either. I, I, oh, I know this awful. of myself. So, you know, I was watching um, uh, For All Mankind, that TV series, the Apple TV series. Uh, the premise for it is the Americans weren't first to the moon. The Russians were. That's the first episode. Yeah. Opening scene. Yeah. The Russians yeah. are on the moon and therefore the space That's race That's fucking continues. bullshit. That's why I won't watch that. Uh, why? I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> oh, it's good. No, yeah, it's no, it really sounds good. good yeah. um, but one of the things is, you know, later on there's like a space hotel. And I was watching it last night uh, with Mrs. F. She's like, would you ever go on one of those? I was like, nee, you know, I don't know if I would. Because even though looking out the window, you can see Earth and it feels like there's a lot of space around you. It is essentially just a submarine in space. Yes, but at least and you... it's very cramped. Yeah, I don't know, though. It feels like I feel like in space, I wouldn't be as worried. I would be worried. Don't get me wrong. I'd be shitting myself, but not as much as I would be underwater because I, I feel like, yeah, I know if I go out into space, I'm not going to be able to breathe. But um, I don't know. I just feel like not being able to breathe underwater would be uh, a lot worse somehow, like more like more scary. And it's like so dark down there, too. Right. Like you wouldn't have. um you wouldn't be able to see anything, whereas at least in space, you can actually just see the Earth, you know, like, you, and you would just die looking at this big, bright Earth and like other crap in space. Whereas underwater, <laughs> you, you would you would die, die immediately and uh, it would be so dark and uh, it would just be miserable, you know? It is kind of fascinating that there's like 150 nuclear powered naval ships, you know, that is actually kind of amazing. Isn't scary, it? Yeah, that's what it is. Pretty scary. And, and honestly, like, I wonder why, obviously they've never had to be destroyed in a war. Do you no. know what I mean? But imagine the contamination oh, yeah. of that sort of of that sort of that thing happening. I mean, in a sense, like, this is one of those things that I always think of when I think of the, the one of these um, great filters, you know, of how we can destroy ourselves and, and other, other races might have destroyed themselves. You know, getting into a war, even if you don't find nuclear weapons, just destroying a bunch of these fucking nuclear submarines and contaminating vast areas of the planet, mm. you know, it's it's so frightening. Yeah. Um. And and how we haven't managed to have any accidents either. There's no no nuclear submarine accidents. We well, there's been a few. That's why we're very careful about who there, we but... vote to get behind the button and give the codes to. You know, because otherwise wow. we'd be so scared to think that somebody isn't it isn't it isn't it somebody it could is so... spark off a, a a a big nuclear war. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, a complete change of topic. This is uh, something we discussed actually on the regular triplets we recorded yesterday, um, which is about um, old, uh, age gaps between men and women. Um, so this is uh, on the topic of old men dating young women. I thought you might find the attached graphs interesting. This is data from OkCupid. Right. Men of all ages will always find 20-ish year old women the most attractive. Yeah. Whereas women will typically find men around their age most attractive. Right. So I'm going to describe the graph for listeners at home, you guys can imagine that the y-axis is ages from 20 to 50. Uh, there's no x-axis. And then there is just a line showing the sort of a median line between the two. And women's age versus the age of men look best to her. And basically, if you can imagine that, it's always going up. So a woman aged 38 generally finds men around 37, 42, 39, 48, around 40, 49, 45. So it's all very similar. And then the men's graph, same plot, from the ages of 20 to 50, 
the oldest that they are going for is 24 <laughs> <laughs> at all ages. And men between 28 and 36, it just says 20 in a straight line. All of them, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Jesus. So basically, uh, you know, men apparently super attracted to women who are 20. 20 mm. year old women. Is that genetic or cultural? Is this something which is built into us or is this something which is which is made to Honestly, us? Honestly, it's by, by, probably by a bit of both, right? There's probably some prehistoric thing in uh in in men to um you know identify somebody uh so, like a like a mating partner that uh, is potentially more fertile or something like that you know what i mean because i think I mean, that, a 20 year old is likely to be able to have kids right? yeah that because like, that, that shit yeah. exists uh in the animal kingdom as well right they 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 kind of know who who they're going for i live yeah. in the animal kingdom. having mate, said that though it. i think animals just fuck anything that they can like no, some of them make for life. Some of them do, yeah. No, like those, very I watched few, the, though, uh, very few. those toucans. Yeah, uh, that was very. That was a good episode. But like on, uh, uh, like on Earth. Clarkson's farm, you know, when they're doing the sheep stuff, and the and the woman, the uh, the the shepherd uh, yes. woman, is saying basically the guys will just just want to have sex all the time because they're yeah. just full of like uh, testosterone and everything from their balls. Of course, and, uh, giant balls. And if they can't, uh, if they can't have sex with uh, with with female sheep, they'll just uh, try to have sex with each other. She said, very rarely female sheep will try to have sex with each other. But um, but yeah, I think I think they just pretty much don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which you yeah. know, or they know they they're just all about one thing. Yeah, I guess. So yeah. so 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 do women still? Go younger though. No, like, not only only by a tiny bit, and in some cases exactly the same, and in some cases one year over. Because obviously it's a sample, right? So I oh. mean, it, they're literally just taking what age you know do you find most attractive, sort of thing. So it's not like they've asked every woman. So I, think I need to variance. say that I'm 22 when I'm on a dating site. <laughs> yeah, ideally. No, no, you need to look at well, no. So whatever age of woman you're after, yeah. you need to match that age. Yeah, that's why I'm saying yeah. 20. So if you're after a 22 year old, but apparently, uh, you know, I, I guess women in general when they're younger only really want younger young guys of their age. Right. So these guys who are like 50 who are after a 20 year old, I mean, you know, we're, we're animals, really, men. We're disgusting. So it's fair enough. Uh, here's. This is a let's end on this one. This is a kind of discussion we could go on. I'm not going to read the whole email because it's sort of all over the place. But the, the question it asks is quite interesting. Um, this this lad is saying that they were quite toxic when they played video games. Right. When they were younger. And they kind of look back on it and they're kind of ashamed of that fact. As three individuals well versed in the gaming sphere, uh, would you be comfortable leaving your children to play games like Dota or Call of Duty or something like that for a sizable chunk of their formative years when indeed they might themselves be acting in a very toxic way online um and does that is that like a positive thing should we have more oversight on them while they're doing that i i would if my son the thing is like my like I, and i'm sure your your daughters as well flax when when they're when they're playing games they're around us like uh, we can hear everything that they're saying we know who they're with online and stuff so mm. the minute he started being toxic we would just say all right it's time to come off right I mean, wouldn't just leave him to fester in some pit of toxicity because i mean it, it I'm, I'm we've all been fucking annoyed playing games and uh and salty and stuff like that and uh, actually just having somebody say to you ah, maybe it's just time to like take a break and do something else or whatever is yeah, uh, yeah. is a good thing you know like it can only only be helpful so I think uh, I think if my I I wouldn't really want to have my my son to have a chance to go down that road. I know I can't be on him all the time and police him all the time, but of certainly course. while he's young, uh, we can get him into good habits around balancing his his time and his interests and stuff, so that he's not just doing one thing where he gets to the point where he's so annoyed that he's being toxic or whatever. You know mm. what I mean? Like yeah, we kind of want to mm. teach him to. You know, do other stuff and yeah, balance yeah, yeah. it out. I mean, I think this is all this is all well and good. I I think like I don't obviously never really agreed with that. Video violent video games make people violent in the same no. way that I think that was the the, the drama of the nineties was the sort of that was yes. it. But but I think that, that that some video games do affect you and make you toxic. I think yeah, they're, I feel they're addictive. Like, right? They they make you play far beyond where you would normally want to play. Right. Well, they change your psychology yeah. too. I think something um. Something that, that like Dota and League of Legends, they are the way you have to interact with people, and the way it, the the way that they, the systems that, that that make you play the game actually are negative. I think 
compared to something like Stardew Valley. I think uh, where you're I think a, a, working a, a together thing to with produce something. Dota, and I think it's uh, I I think it makes it worse with a game like Dota. Honestly, is that um, you can get you can get really annoyed with yourself whilst playing Dota, but because the games are long, you have to sit there and kind of um, be punished by mm. your mistakes for a long time until the game is done. And then uh, the, the the whole process of, okay, I'll do better next time. I'm going to join a game again and lock myself right. into another hour where probably I will fuck up and get annoyed with myself and just be <laughs> miserable until the game is over again. And then you just repeat the cycle and it gets worse and worse and worse. Like you can see how easily it would happen in a game like Dota, right? Yeah. Compared to other games where you fuck up, the game's over, you know, and you could just say, ah. You know, I haven't had to just sit there and be, you know, reminded of how bad I am or whatever for yeah. a long time. It's over. Now I can make a choice uh, while I still have some rationality left in me to quit and move on, do something else or, you know, try again or whatever and, and try not to get so angry or whatever. I think I think the type of game that you're playing really uh, can fuck you over as well. You know, and Dota specifically, I think, is the worst yeah. for that. Because Dota, I mean, I played enough Dota. Flex, you've played a shit ton of Dota. Yeah. Dota is uh, something that you have to have the patience to, uh, for to play. And mm. it is the ragiest game. I mean, there's a, <laughs> it, it, it turns people into fucking monsters. Like, people it you've never to. met before will call you every fucking name under the sun normally because they're playing badly you know what i mean like <laughs> it's not you know yeah okay sure if you fuck up a little bit and somebody calls you out on it but like this is like extreme right like uh yeah and i i'm sure that these people would never behave this way uh in real life around other people and if they did well hopefully they just like end up in jail or whatever but you know what i mean like it, it is yeah, really yeah, it yeah. can be very very toxic and i think I think having uh, having some sense of balance around some of this stuff is is pretty helpful. So I think if you have young kids, you can start teaching them stuff like that early on, so that hopefully they don't just become big fucking miserable ragers when they're when they're older. You know? Yeah. Well, there you go. Some wise words from Sid. Yeah. <sighs> I yeah, should take my own advice good. sometimes, actually, but uh, <laughs> but there you go. It's uh, it's it, it's nice to have that uh, to have that view on it. But uh, if only you could apply it to yourself sometimes, right? Yeah, I mean, my my eldest plays games, but she, I, I've noticed that she plays with her mates, and they're all on Discord. They just play together. She doesn't just play with randoms. Yeah, I think a big part of it is the anonymity, obviously, of the internet yeah. has always made people into dickheads. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Look, don't feel too bad ab about um about yourself, uh, Mister Mister Emailer, because the fact that you were able to look back and think that was bad has in some way been formative because you've looked back at that behavior and not thought man it was really fun being a complete twat to people you're like oh shit i'm kind of ashamed of that and i definitely have that about ways that i was in the past online or games that i played i was like man i was kind of an insufferable prick like even more than now yeah um so it's good to look back and i think in a way, making mistakes is is it's part of growing as a human being. Yeah, I I think I think a lot of these games like Dota have this forced competitiveness built into them, and that that that's partly how they hook you into playing them because they you know you start in gold league. You know, gold league is the lowest league kind of thing. Like it's a classic tr trick to make you feel like you're better at something, as and that that will keep you playing. Right? Yeah. People like to do things they think they're good yeah. at. Mm. And I think that as a result, you, you your format changes from playing for fun to playing competitively. Yeah. And it becomes very serious very quick. You know, it doesn't look like anyone who's playing chess is really enjoying it. Um, <laughs> just, just, I mean, it's, it's so competitive, so yeah. thoughtful, so much is on the line. It's so serious. And I think gaming isn't supposed to be that. No, right? no. And I think like another thing you could do, it sounds boring and a lot of people can't do it, but like limit yourself to like, you know, if you're if you want to play Dota, just say to yourself, I'm only playing two games today, regardless right. of how they go. Just two. And and you 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 will probably be a lot less toxic because your mm. your your time playing will be a lot less. And you'll, you know, if you're doing other stuff as well, you'll start to realize, hang on, it's not the be all end all. I'm doing it just to have fun, especially if you can play with friends or whatever. Just play, play, limit yourself to a game or two and then do something else. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Agreed. You're, you're not going to get any better caning it playing 13 hours a day and just being miserable doing it. Right. And like, being horrible to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it is probably better to just limit yourself 
and uh, and have like a healthier relationship with it. Well, that's uh, that's your mailbag. Yeah. Very serious. Well, and it's nice to end not. on a on a point where uh, you know people can yeah. maybe learn some something from from an esteemed gamer like. Yeah, let us know. Um, let us know your your letters, your thoughts. We're we're interested to read about your lives and hear about your your interests. Yeah. So please, yeah. please, uh, please. Send I'm a them trained in. psychologist as well, so I mean, I don't <laughs> mind helping out where I can. You know, uh, if, free if you charge have a, as well. No if you have an interesting story or something, you don't need to ask me. Would you like to hear this interesting story? Just email it. Um, yeah. Because otherwise. It's like sometimes I'll not reply because I don't check the mailbag every day. I'll, I won't reply in time for the mailbag episode, and then I miss your interesting story, and then it, it maybe gets lost in the shuffle. So if you think you've got an interesting story, send it in. But remember, keep it brief. Keep it brief. Keep, keep, it, keep, it, keep, keep it light it brief. and brief. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Keep yeah. it secret and safe and brief. Keep it brief. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. We love you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye.